All yeah. right, so liar, liar. Basically, first one to three points, uh, you get a point for getting it right. And if both the boys don't get it right, the point goes to the greatest pitcher of all time, Trevor Bauer, of course, the greatest pitcher on the Dodgers staff. Greatest pitcher of all time. What am I even saying here? Uh, anyways, we'll get started off here <laughs> with Combs. I Are you ready, sir? Ready. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> all right, let's do this. So here we go. So the first one. There are more than 200,000 sports across the world. Okay, the next one. Soccer was the first sport ever, ever invented. And then in 1950, India had to withdraw from the FIFA World Cup because they weren't allowed to play barefoot. So we've got, there are over 200,000 sports across the world. Soccer was the first sport ever, and India had to withdraw from the FIFA World Cup in 1950 because they would not allow them to play barefoot. At first, I was like, the soccer one, easy. But then the India barefoot one kind of strikes me as, as as a possibility. Ah, man, I, like... India not having shoes. Like, I feel like their team would be able to get sponsored, though, by, like, Nike or something since all of their three-year-olds make the shoes. So I figure they would be able to (laughs) get some free shoes from them. Um, So I'm going to go with with soccer was the first sport ever invented. Oh, yes. Soccer seems because like soccer seems to be very very popular like over like overseas and so whatnot so it definitely make it make sense. Two hundred thousand sports I mean that seems kind of up your alley just because you know we have camel racing right right there white we have camel racing and like and all like, kinds there's all kinds of crazy right? sports yeah so yeah I want to go with the uh, two hundred two hundred thousand sports but I mean just the just the uh, the the whole India no shoe thing kind of doesn't make sense. And no. I don't believe there's a 1950 Olympics either, if I'm not mistaken. So, All right, right so we've got – My uh, four-year-old son was making shoes, and I couldn't get a pair. I'd be pretty mad. So, Combs, what, you're, you're going, with, uh, going with soccer. With, was the first sport ever? Okay. All right, so with that being said, starting off the night at one to nothing. Thank you. Trevor Bauer, the greatest pitcher of all time, takes over – uh, oh. It is actually true that in 1950, India had to withdraw from the FIFA World Cup because they weren't allowed to play barefoot. Oh, FIFA, they, refu- they refused to play uh, with shoes. So huh. FIFA, FIFA said you either withdraw or you play with shoes, and they said we'll withdraw. All right. Pretty wow. crazy, actually. James All right, Trevor, next one. Trevor Bauer. Trevor Bauer starts us off with the uh, 1-0 lead, you know, like the you know greatest pitcher that he is. Next, uh, Cut Buck is going to start us off on this one, uh, and we'll start off with Gaylord Perry hit his first and only home run two hours after Neil Armstrong stood on the moon, okay? Next, in 1950, the Canadian hockey team was so good that they got a free pass to the final. They didn't have to play any of their games leading up to it. Uh, next one, in the 90s, bowlers made more than some NBA players. So we've got Gaylord Perry hit the first and only home run two hours after Neil Armstrong stood on the moon. In 1950, the Canadian, high, the Canadian ice hockey team got a free pass to the final because they were so good. And in the 90s, bowlers, certain bowlers made more than some NBA players. Like the top paid made more than I'd say, you know, some of the bottom paid. Right. So with that being said, if you ever get a free pass into the finals because you're, quote, you're too, you're too good, you are playing in a wrong tournament. I would be furious if I was opposing teams with that. But I'm going to go with the uh, with the uh, professional bully because Pete, because Pete, Pete, Pete Weber and uh, uh, Norm, uh, Norm McDonald, was that his name? It's Norm some, 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 yeah. some, 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 something. Like they were winning all times, all kinds of, uh, all kinds of events and winning a lot of money. They were on TV, and bowling was really, really big back in the 90s. I would almost say they surpassed basketball uh, if they were go head-to-head. So I, I, I'm going to go with bowling. Yeah, I'm going to – I think the Gaylord Perry one is true. It, it makes sense. He was pitching around that time, and, I, you know, pitchers don't hit very many home runs. But I'm going to go with Gaylord Perry on that one. All right, so with that being said – Tying it up at one to one, so one of you boys did get a point, and that is BC 
Brandon Combs. Yes, sir. It is true that Gaylord Perry hit the first and only home run uh, only two hours after uh, Neil Armstrong stood on the moon. Uh, And in 1930, the Canadian hockey team got a free pass all the way through um, to the final, not in 1950. Uh, Excuse me. As well as in the 70s and 80s, uh, certain bowlers made more than NFL players in the 70s and 80s. So switch it up on you guys a little bit to make it a little harder to throw you Wait, off. But hey, so so hang on one second. In 1900, in 1990s, the 1900s, right? Pete Weber was making almost 25 million dollars a year. That's more than in NBA 1990? guys. Yeah. In 1990. Yeah. Come on, man. I didn't know that. Well. Tell you what, then we've got our first botched one on 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 liar liar. Just do, give, no, what, do, no, do we, do no. we give it? No, just go ahead. Combs give, gives a point. point. Combs gives a point, even though you're wrong, Wyatt. That's okay. My bad, guys. <laughs> I'll just, I had to <laughs> run into one eventually. So uh, hey, actually, to, actually, I was lying. To, it was uh, it was two point five, not twenty twenty. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> you made me feel like crap, man. I was like, oh, I really did just botch this. Like, I put so much research into this. I was like. How did I mess that? I, I lied about something that was true and made it true. I, I don't know. Scared the crap out of me. But anyways. Hey, Tori no, Anderson, if one of your pitchers hits Javi Baez ever again, I'm going to punch you in the throat. Just throwing <laughs> it out there. All right. Next, we have got Combs leading us off here. So, Combs, here we go. You ready, sir? Yes, sir. So, with that being said, our first one. A baseball pitcher once threw 20 straight walks before he was asked to, you know, and and not in one game, just in, you know, from from walk through through the rest of his series, he threw 20 straight walks and he never pitched again. They fired him and nobody else hired him ever again. All right. Uh, And I do not remember the name of him. So I apologize on that one. I do not have the name on that one. But, you know, if that is true, that could be true. You never know. But next one. The longest baseball game ever was 40 innings in 1933. Okay. Mm-hmm. In the next, the Tour de France has many unwritten rules that must be followed, much like baseball. Ooh. So we've got a baseball pitcher once through 20 straight, 20 straight walks and was forced to, you know, essentially were forced to retire. Um, next, we've got the longest baseball game ever was 40 innings in 1933. And the Tour de France has many unwritten rules that must be followed, much like baseball. Tour de France probably does have a ton of unwritten rules. Uh, I'm going to go with the 40 inning one, though. I'm going to go with last time I went against a baseball one, you, you, <laughs> I screwed myself. So I'm going with the 40 inning one. I think I, I feel like that's true. There was a, once a game that went overnight, and they ended up having to stop it and play the rest of it the next day. Um, and uh, I want to say one of those. I'm go- I'm going 40 innings. So that was actually a movie. That was Mr. 3000 Combs. I think what you're th- thinking of, and like in the movie with Bernie. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, so <laughs> what was the uh, first one again? Uh, 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 Wyatt. Yeah, baseball pitcher once threw 20 straight okay. walks and then was essentially forced to retire. Right. I mean, I'm pretty sure you can't really get forced to retire. I mean, you can get forced to get fired or a cut or no, or, no. He 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 didn't get forced to retire, but like he he got fired and then yeah. nobody ever hired him again. So essentially, he was forced right. to retire. And uh, I mean, you can have all the unwritten rules you want, but that doesn't make you force you to follow them. I mean, like just because baseball says you can't backflip, uh, didn't we see uh the Blue Jays guy do a back do a backflip and then eight and then eight months later they started to fight like like over it. So. Uh, by that aspect, give me the Tour de France, just, 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 just because like I feel it's so crazy that it's probably true. All right. So with that being said, tying it up at one, 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 Michael Buckheister gets his first point of the night. Oh, wow. Let me read you guys these unwritten rules of the Tour de France. You ready for this? This is insane. Oh God. If the tour passes through a town that one of the riders grew up in, everyone has to slow down to let that rider take the lead. That's one of them. The next one, there's what? four of them. This, yeah, I know, right? Stupid. Next one, if the leader of the Tour de France needs to pee, then everyone has to stop and slow down and let him pee. Well, if I'm smart, then I'm going to put on I'm going to find a fake birth certificate. I'm going to look at the Tour de France thing and I'm going to be like, "All right, so if These, you're, you're we pass through the final town that we pass through, that's where I'm from." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then the next one, uh riders aren't allowed to attack the yellow jersey or other contenders if they crash 
or experience a mechanical incident. I don't know what that means. The yellow jersey, whatever that means. And the yellow last one, means you won race... the stage. The previous stage. Okay. The uh, final one, race leaders are experienced riders in the peloton. Uh, main pack of riders can call a neutralization or go slow if race conditions are dangerous. So if the older racers feel like the ra- the conditions are, are dangerous, they can tell everybody to slow down. And everybody has to what? follow that. Yeah. And you I didn't know, I didn't know any of this. Why? Whatever. Carry on. Next exactly. One. Yeah, that, so that, I thought that one was crazy. Right. But anyways, right, here we go. There is a 150-year-old oak tree in the middle of a soccer field in Estonia. All right. Next, in the 90s, many hockey players had side jobs, and the side job was boxing. Okay? They made money off boxing on the side. And next one, in in an Olympic qualifying match for women's hockey, in 2008, a team won 28 to nothing. All right. What was the first one again? Uh, in the 90s, many hockey players had side jobs, and the side job was boxing. In the 90s? Yep, and then uh, there's a 150-year-old oak tree in the middle of a soccer field in Estonia. And then also in, in an Olympic qualifying match for women's hockey in 2008, a team won 28 to nothing. Yeah, I, I don't think the hockey one is it like, like, like it is right, but I feel like the soccer one is because – Every time, you know, like you always get like those, those like la la, like those old, ancient things that like you don't want to like disturb, and I feel like that would be one of them. So give it, so give it the hundred fifty 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 year old tree. All right. Yeah, so. I feel like that one is the truth too. Um, but just for the sake of it, I'm gonna go with twenty eight to nothing. There have been some crazy yeah. hockey scores out there that especially women's. Ha- there have been. So I, I'm gonna go with the twenty eight to nothing hockey team. All right, so Buck, you're going with the 150-year-old oak tree, and Combs, you're going with the 2008 um, women's qualifying was 28 nothing. Yeah. All right, with that being said, taking a 2-1-1 to one lead on the night, Michael Buckheister Ooh. coming through in the clutch. Uh, there is a 150-year-old oak tree in the middle of a soccer field in Estonia. That's insane. They play around it. Um that the wow. 90s thing is not true um, at all. I made that up. But the Olympic – this one's even more bizarre, okay? So I actually dumbed this down. In an Olympic qualifying match for women in 2008, a team once won by like – it was like 88 to nothing. They scored a goal every 44 seconds because the team they were playing was so bad. And, the, like, literally they couldn't skate. Like, they were just terrible yeah, at hockey. There, there, there was really that, bad. That, and I don't remember what country it was. It was some, you know, country that, you know, is – in the middle of nowhere that, you know, none of us know. Was it Canada? Um, yes. No. There was but, a men's um, game not there, too long ago that was something like 47 to nothing or something. Yeah, like well, but but this team, their entire tournament, they they lost in the qualifying matches. Their their overall score was like 182 to nothing. They got scored okay. on an average of every like two minutes and 10 seconds, something like that. It was nuts. That's like nuts. It, it was it was not even fair. It was so bad. That's but anyways – Two, Were they playing I know, without right? a goalie? Like, was it was it five on three with I, no I, goalie I just, or something? I just imagine, <laughs> like, little five-year-olds that are still learning how to skate, like, keep on falling down, and they're just like – Was they Wyatt playing they, goalie? Exactly. They just, like, scoot <laughs> in between each player and then just kind of, like, tap it <laughs> in the Wyatt net. Did Wyatt quit after the first period and make Nikki play goalie? <laughs> <laughs> she can actually skate better than I can, so that wouldn't be good for him. Uh, but anyways – Next off, uh, Combs, you're starting this one off, sir, right? Yes, sir. All right, so here we go. The record for most 10-pin strikes in one minute is 17. So they had seven they, – they had I don't know how many lanes set up, but this guy, like, grabbed a ball, rolled it, grabbed a ball, rolled it, and went down this lanes, and in one minute he had 17 10-pin strikes in, 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 in 60 seconds. Okay. Uh, next, the shortest NBA game ever was only 32 minutes. All right. Okay. And then uh, the last one, sheep counting is an official sport in Australia. Ooh. I don't know about sheep in Australia. Um, what was the first one again? The ten, I'll, I'll do that one. The 10 pin strike, the 17 strikes in, in one minute. That's what I'm going with, the bowling one. Yeah, 
that that that's the that's the kind of one I was leaning toward. I like like as well because there's that there's a lot of crazy records like out there. <clears> just just like that, like how many three points am I committed or something? Wild ones, yeah. So what was the second one again? Yeah, so we had uh, shortest NBA game ever was 32 minutes, and then the other one is sheep counting is an official sport uh, in Australia. Sheep counting because why would an NBA game be shorter than the rest of the game? That doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> sheep sheep counting. All right. With that being said. Getting awarded the point and the win for the night, Michael oh. Buckheister. It is true. Sheep counting is an official sport in Australia. That's true. Really? Um, the record for most 10 pin strikes is actually 14, not 17. I, if you would have said like <laughs> wallaby counting or something, I would have. Okay, kangaroo counting. <laughs> but yeah, no. In our crazy. nation. Thank you for checking out that clip. If you're interested in watching the full show, the link is in the description. Click on it, hit that like button, share it with a couple friends, and as always, Man Hour Nation, rise up.